Good morning. Thanks for joining us for the Farm and Ranch News. The Public Lands Council has released their latest video in their Range Reel series. Montana rancher Chisholm Christensen and his family who ranch near Hinsdale were featured. In the video, Chisholm talks about how well-meaning regulations like NEPA and the Endangered Species Act have only made things more difficult for the ranching families that steward public lands. Rules and regulations made in the cubicles of Washington, D.C. are too disconnected from the land. Overcomplicated rules require hundreds of pages of scientific analysis just to fix a fence. Don't get me wrong, laws are important. They just don't make sense when they fail the people and the land they were made to protect. Well, the wheat futures have seen a lot of volatility lately, so to help make sense of what the market is doing, I spoke with Tanner Emke, a grain analyst from CoBank. Tanner said Russia continuing to export huge amounts of wheat has weighed on the market, but he expects the market to find some momentum as we move through the growing season. Wheat really has not woken up to these ideas that fundamentally we're going to have some uh, short supply conditions in the year ahead. I would say just give it time and supply and demand fundamentals will align and the market will awaken to this idea that perhaps we may not have enough wheat to go around in the crop year forthcoming. Well, thanks for joining us here this morning. We'll see you back here in an hour for the markets. We asked Montana farmer Walt Sales about the challenges of mental health in agriculture. Another drought, there always is. There's always gonna be another something. I grew up in a generation of, you pulled yourself up by your bootstraps, but it's become evident is what do you do if you can't even find those bootstraps? If you need to talk to somebody, go to beyondtheweather.com for free counseling for Montana ag producers. Welcome back to the Ag News. The Montana Department of Livestock is inviting ranchers, veterinarians, and other interested folks to three meetings in the Brucellosis designated surveillance area the next two weeks. At these meetings, state veterinarian Marty Zalewski will review recent elk surveillance results, provide updates on market access for destination states, and review brucellosis regulations in the DSA. The department will also discuss a recent audit of the state's brucellosis program by USDA. The DSA affects cattle producers in portions of Beaverhead, Madison, Gallatin, and Park counties where brucellosis is known to be established in wildlife. Well, as we turn to our markets, a mixed day in the cattle futures with feeders finding good support from lower corn prices. Some slight improvement in cash sales from earlier this week. Live trade has ranged from 170 to 177, dressed 275 to 278. A big pair special at the public auction yards. First calf heifer pairs saw great demand from $2,700 to $3,000 and a quarter. Three to four year old pairs, $22 and a quarter to $28 and a quarter. The five to eight year olds, $2,575 to $2,775. And older pairs, $1,600 to $1,800. Finished lambs in Sioux Falls finally working higher, up one to eight dollars from $166 to $187, and the use from $40 to $65. And the wheat market in the red on expectations for bearish crop reports from USDA today. Analysts are expecting an 8% increase in wheat production. U.S. ending stocks expected to hold steady over the next year, but global supplies are forecast to fall 2%. Well, that's going to do it for today's Ag Report. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to call your mother this weekend.